for joining us. Welcome to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, Luke Mathers on the board. Calvin hey. Jr. That's that's my nickname. Calvin today. Jr. Calvin. I told Greg I was Calvin the next couple of days, and he was like, "No, no, no, it's fine. I'll board." And I was like, <laughs> "I'm Calvin. Come on." Well, thank you so much, Luke Mathers, and I just want to say thank you for bringing in your associate producer puppy. Not not a problem. She, she uh, she's very eager to learn. She she she's very <laughs> eager uh, in general. Luke to turn my mic up. Oh, he wants his mic on. God, he just wants everything. Okay. Jeez, wow. Greg, you're so demanding. I thought you were still getting situated with the video. So no, I'm good to go. To I'm ready. Oh, okay. I'm a professional, okay? Uh, also, are you Greg Bach? Yes. You are Greg I'm, Bach. I'm Calvin. I'm Greg. I'm just, Jane, just, I'm just an enigma of just all, multiple, the, all multiple, the producers <laughs> together. All, all rolled into one. Um, if you want to look at uh, Aurora, the associate producer puppy, by the way, I put it up on Matt Nair on air mm-hmm. on the uh, platform that Elon has ruined. So you can uh, you can take a look at Aurora. How old is she? Eleven weeks. She is. She's a young pup. She's so, and she's really well behaved. Yeah. I was hoping so. She, we're we're she working is. on some social socialization skills and all of those things. And so, uh, since I'm Calvin and I'm filling in, and I got mm-hmm. a little bit more of a commute, uh, I'm away from the home a little bit longer. Sure. And so, uh, just with the work schedules, we wanted to not have her in the kennel for an extended period of time. So. Yesterday, I brought her just to see how things would go. It went and, well. Uh, the consensus yeah. was everybody said, please bring her back. Please keep bringing her back. So, uh, yeah, she's been on very good behavior. And if there's not a meeting for me in the afternoon after the show on Monday, I might bring Maybell. Ooh. So we might have oh, two puppers. That'd be great. I am, I am pro puppers in the workplace. I, I, I absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. think it. Uh, I just think everybody feels better. Quite pro honestly, pu- pro puppers. Pro puppers. We are pro pupper. All right. Um, we're going to talk about the RNC. Of course, the RNC is going to be coming to Milwaukee this summer from July 15th to the 18th. Yeah. And I saw this article in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, which I just find interesting. A uh, Bayview bar called The Mothership. Yep. Uh, the owner has announced, he put it on Instagram and Facebook, that they're going to be closed during the week of the RNC. Quote, I'm not trying to get involved with or actively take money or rent the space out to that tomfoolery. However, the bar would still be open for private events for free to dirt cheap prices. <laughs> Is this... <laughs> I mean, certainly it's your it's your business. You yeah, can do what you want. I I don't know if this is a good thing. I mean, it's like it, it's your choice, but I guess why not have it open? Like, all right, I'm I'm a local business person, have her helper owner thing, right. whatever, with the laughing tap, and we plan on not only being open for the RNC, but hopefully we'll have some programming there. Whether it's shows or whatever. Just to utilize the space. Just to utilize the space because, you know, there's going to be a need for entertainment. There's going to be a need. And as as from his point of view, he's like, why would I do that? I see it from why not? Why wouldn't you take their money? Yeah. I mean, I I understand you may not agree with the politics, but. I guarantee you people who vote against your against your ideas. Go to your bar, go to your theater, go to your restaurant, go to your whatever. They they are there. I mean, unless he's got the kind of clientele that's going to start picking fights. And that is something that I have thought about and that I'm quite honestly concerned about is people getting into arguments at bars of differing political persuasions. Yeah, that could happen without the RNC coming to town, though, anyways, right? I. That's true, but it's just going to be that much more heightened and that much more, I, I don't know, I, I, I am concerned about that. I would like to think we will be better behaved than that. Really quick to interrupt, sorry, uh, Jeff Sist- Sitzma on the live stream saying there's no YouTube sound. All right, we will check All on right. that. I will work on it. Thanks for that, Jeff. Thanks, Kelvin Jr. A- Not a problem. <laughs> Is this a mistake? I mean, uh, again, I don't know, it's only three days. But it's a lot of people. It is a lot of people. I mean, remember, in order to get up, when we wanted the DNC, we had to build a certain amount of hotel rooms, and we did. So now that the RNC is going to be here, we build hotels to make this happen. People are going to be looking for things to do. And also, 
Remember, it's not just going to be Republicans in the city. You're going to have journalists. You're going to have journalists all over MSNBC. You're going to have all these different. Like, I'm sure they'll find you. They're going to go to where the cool places are. I'm going to make. I'm going to bet a little money that people who are going to the RNC and are affiliated with that world aren't going to the hipster artsy place of Bayview. They're going to stay in Third Ward, Fifth Ward, downtown. That's about it. I think you're right. I, I do. I mean, there may be a few who end up either staying in that area, in the Airbnb or something. Yeah. But you're you're probably right as far as the vast majority that doesn't yeah. necessarily that the hipster places. Yeah. The, the, uh, I don't want to go to the cool places. <laughs> Where are all the cool kids hanging out? Yeah. So if you are a fan of this bar, bad news, the mothership. I've never been there. Uh, in Bayview, famous for its tiki drinks and hams on tap. It's got a hams tap. It's got a hams tap. I got a hams tap. They're going to be closed for the RNC July 15th to the 18th to avoid the tomfoolery. <laughs> that's a very uh, weird word. According to the uh, owner. That's a pr- that's a Pat Kreitlow word right there, tomfoolery. <laughs> um, I, th- I think you're just saying it's an old word. Yes. And then you just threw Pat under the bus yeah. with that one. Well, yeah. <laughs> Because if, oh, you, essentially. if you listen to if you listen to Up North News, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. on Civic Media, get it on your Civic Media app free to download. You will hear me consistently whenever he makes an old timey word come out of his mouth. I hit a little ding ding winner button. And if I have time, I'll be like, back in my day, I used to go 10 miles to get myself a packet of cigarettes. You know, something like that. Very old timey. Oh, we used to play hoop and stick. I'm pretty sure I'm older than Pat Kreitlow. Yeah, I was going um, <laughs> to say, Jane, I think uh, you and Pat catching I, some I, strays sure. around here. Well, yeah, because, Jane, you invented hoop and stick, right? There were no hoops when I was alive, <laughs> when I was born. They were just straight was pieces pre- of wood. That, all we had was sticks. There were, there were only sticks. There were there were no hoops yet. That was that was pretty me. <laughs> are, there any, <laughs> are there any business owners out there right now who are in Milwaukee or the surrounding area who are going to close? Call us. Let us know why. I'd be curious. Yeah, I really would be curious. For the most part, I would think that people really, it's a chance to make money. Yes. You have a business. Your business is there to make a profit and you can, they drink just like other people drink. Well, the whole, that was the whole argument, bringing the RNC to town. It wasn't red. It wasn't blue. It it was green. Well, no, it was was green. green. Yes, exactly. The money money is coming into the city, but there were still some people that didn't necessarily buy into that argument. I have a feeling this bar owner. One of those individuals, most likely, and again, that's perf- it's perf- it's up to you. It's your yeah. choice, man. Whatever makes you happy, and if he's got that kind of attitude, maybe it's better. Again, I don't, I don't want us to be on the national news. Or Any the, excuse or the, for a vacation, though. I mean, that's my thing. You know, I'll just get out of town while it's happening. That's <laughs> that's that's not a bad point. We get a couple of texts on the text line. West from Middleton says, "There's a gonna, there's going to be a lot of reprehensible people coming to town." That said, take the money. This is going to be a massive economic boon for Milwaukee and Wisconsin as a whole. We pull this off well, and we are more established as a destination for big events. Milwaukee is one of the most underrated cities in the country. I agree. I agree. This helps move it up the list. I totally agree. As it develops, as it grows, yeah, I mean, this. you might not like it, but that's important when, when organizations pick Milwaukee or Wisconsin for a massive event. Um, and then Dave from New Berlin just says, Jeepers. <laughs> Jeep. Ding, ding, ding. Jeepers is a perfectly respectable word. But is it not old? Is it foggy? It's foggy. Are, are we talking foggy? <laughs> Jeepers, the milk is 10 cents a gallon today. <laughs> That, that, I don't know what that word is that you guys just used. I, I Cheapers? No, no, no. I know that one. I don't know what fogey Fogies. is. Yeah, I don't know what fogey like means. old fogey, like a, a crotchety old man. Mm. Never Com- heard of You've Com- never. Completely unaware of that I thought once you turn 30, they just hand you a book full of all of the old No, first turns. I feel it in my knees. And then, then the book comes in a couple oh. weeks, I think. They have to send it in the mail. The old school, Pony Express, something like that. It's only going to get worse. <laughs> Back to the RNC. <laughs> <laughs> My biggest concern is that we're going to make headlines for the wrong reason. And I, I just pray that that does not happen. I that there are a whole bunch of fights or, you know, no. a, a damage or robberies or carjackings or whatever. I, I love the city of Milwaukee and I want us to look 
great. And I want us to be better. I have a feeling that the it's going to really depend on the severity. Like, yes, if there is a if there is unfortunately, and the, the way the reason I say shooting is because it happened at uh, the night the Bucks won the right the championship. The championship. I think whatever the level of it is, like, of course, people are going to fight. They're going to be fights. They're going to be people pushing and shoving and screaming at each other. I almost think that's part of the that's part of it because wherever the one goes, the other is going to respond and they'll probably get into some kind of tussle. But it's how I think how Milwaukee will handle this situation True. when it comes down because we can't control what other people can do, especially when they're coming from outside the city and outside the state. It's how the city of Milwaukee, whether it be the government, the police, so on and so forth, how, how they handled. respond to to the incidents or yeah. that's what's going to set us apart. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be interesting. That's gonna, that, that's the only prediction that I have is that it will be interesting because I have no idea what's going to happen this <laughs> yeah, summer. Yeah. And and having the, the DNC in Chicago just a little couple hours south of us, uh, it's 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 going to be an interesting political summer here in the Midwest. <laughs> Another texter uh, listening here on WAUK. Thank you. Personally, I'm wondering if they're even going to be able to pay their bills since the Republican Party is financially ruined right now. I will be able to pay just the rental uh, will they be able to even pay the rental on anything? So actually, I have a, I kind of have an answer for that. If you are a business owner and you have been approached by really any political campaign or the DNC or the RNC, this does not have anything to do with party. If they want to use your space, rent it out, pay you for your services, here is a trick. Whatever you want to be paid, make it the deposit because they generally do not pay their bills. That's an excellent point. They generally do not pay their bills because after a campaign, they're like, well, we don't have any money. Yeah, we're out of money. <laughs> or they're just trash. So if you want to get paid by these individuals and you want your money up front, make it your deposit. That's really smart advice from our friend Greg Bach. You can always join the conversation. Call or text at 855-75-CIVIC-STICKLOSE. You're listening to Matt Nair on air, coming to you across the Civic Media Radio Network. on the board coming to you live from our studio in downtown Waukesha. Thanks for joining us. If you're listening in lacrosse on WLCX, the Eagle, wherever you are, you can, it's not, we need a good, better bird sound. We did have it. We did have a sound effect, Luke Mathers and uh, Calvin played it one day and, and it wasn't an Eagle. It was a Hawk. And someone actually texted in and said, I'm sorry, that's not an well, Eagle. Actually, it's a, it's a, it's a Hawk. So hey, we have, we have the to, folks are listening at least, right? They have very <laughs> sharp ears. Uh, so apparently we're going to have to find an actual Eagle uh, sound. But All right. I'm, I'm going to take a couple days. I'm going to go up north. I'm just going to sit in, in a quiet a tree, area along in a the tree. River. Yep. Uh, hopefully some fish, you know, yep. making their way up and down the stream. And then I will I will try to get a, a recording of an eagle cry. We will send you on assignment. All right. All right I'll see you guys later. Sounds good. Packing <laughs> it up now. Bye. <laughs> 855-75-CIVIC, 855-752-4842. If you ever want to join the show, we were talking about a bar in Bayview that is going to be closed during the RNC because the owner says he does not want to deal with that tomfoolery. <laughs> and uh, you said we had a couple texts, Greg. Yeah, we had, well, uh, we got one text from uh, Carmela in Milwaukee. Thank you for reaching out. Jane and Greg, I read the Mar Mothership article yesterday. I knew Civic Media was going to cover it. What I read was that the owner said he would have closed if the Democratic convention had happened. And I, I, know, that, I know that. I read the article. And I'm not saying, honestly, not saying because of the party. It's 
He just doesn't want to deal with doesn't the hassle. Do it, yeah. So I guess his point of view is that he he wants to be non-political and stick to just slinging drinks. And that's I I, that's I don't a very disagree. Fair point, Car- Carmelo. Yep. Because he actually said in there, he said drinks and politics don't mix, and I disagree with that. I think drunkenness and politics cannot mix, but. Have a have a cocktail, have a beer, talk about your political differences. One of the worst things we ever did in this country was say, we don't talk about politics, we don't talk about sex, we don't talk about money, we don't talk about religion, and now we have to talk about the weather with Ted in accounting. <laughs> See, I thought he was going to say prohibition. I thought prohibition was one of the no, worst things we no, did. No, that's, <laughs> that's Eric Hovde. <laughs> Well, that, that's I think he's pro, pro prohibition. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. actually, yeah. We, we we all have to brew it ourselves. Um, and a com- a completely unsolicited praise comment that I wanted to share. Robin Allen on the live stream. You guys, you guys make my heart twitter. I'm sitting in the car wash with a big smile. Thank you so very much, Robin. We really, really appreciate that. We do. We do. It's nice to know that we make you smile. All right, moving on to Eric Hovde. He is now pledging he will donate his entire salary to a Wisconsin charity if he gets elected in November and defeats Tammy Baldwin. It's part of his campaign claiming he can't be bought. Is is it a California charity or a Wisconsin? He said charity? Wisconsin charity. Okay, all right. Did not specify it's the a, charity. It's a charity for axe throwing uh, violence victims. He is, of course, a multimillionaire. Yep. Eric Hovde, <laughs> yeah. Multimillionaire banking mogul. One of his recent ads says Washington has become corrupt. Really? <laughs> become? Really? Well, okay. The, has become take. corrupt, saying career politicians sell themselves to special interests instead of working for their constituents. If you decide to elect me as your next senator, I will donate my entire salary to a Wisconsin charity every year. And you had brought up Pat Kreitlow a, a little bit earlier, and Pat Kreitlow commented on this. He's our colleague on Up North News. Mm-hmm. You can catch him Monday through Friday from 6 to 8 a.m. on much of the Civic Media Radio Network. Pat Kreitlow says, for me, this approach is automatically disqualifying. If you're so rich that you don't need our salary what makes me think you're going to be on my side rather than all the other rich dudes? Yeah. And he's absolutely right. Um, this, we, this, we've got a case study, too, here in Wisconsin. We have one senator who has doubled their wealth since being elected to the Senate. He's not on the ballot for a little while. Let me guess. That, that would be our senior senator, Ron Johnson. That is correct. That's the one. Okay. So, and, and I don't think Ron Johnson doubled his wealth because of the salary that the, the U.S. Senate provides to senators. Yeah. Uh, so... But we've also seen this before. Donald Trump said, oh, I'm going to donate all of my paychecks to X, Y, or Z. And then I don't, was there ever proof? Well, he did the first the first couple. Yeah, like the first quarter, I think he did one. And, then and that it, was it. Yeah, it and just, then it, it went just away. Disappeared. So I don't, we've seen this before. Yeah, the the, the claim, the, the pledge that they'll do that. And I mean, honestly, like Hovde doesn't need the money ever. He doesn't, he's very, very rich and- he would make a public spectacle. He's doing anything he can to ingratiate himself to this state. Well, he's kind of ripping off Herb Cole's whole slogan, too. He's he's not even coming up with original right. ideas. He's like, no, nobody's senator but yours. But that's that was Herb Cole's thing. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> His wife, Mrs. Hovde, I think it's Sharon Hovde is her name. That I'm not sure of. Uh, just dropped a new ad this past week. And it is so weird. Is it? Because, once again, no policies. It is all about how his how her husband is from Wisconsin. He was born here. He went to high school here. He graduated from college here. Then he left here, and he never came back except for visiting his yeah, property. He tried to run, he tried to well, run for then, office other times, too. Right, and he, and yeah. he lost. <laughs> yeah. But he did that from California. And he is, I mean, this whole offensive they have going right now is all about he is like you. Right. He, I am like you. And I am he, you. And every step they are, they are stepping on a rake because the Sharon Hovde ad is so not good. It's just at, at and one every, point and every man's millionaire is a really hard idea to pitch. Like yeah. that, that oh, is yeah. not, that is not a, a, <laughs> a demographic that really, th- those two things don't mesh well. Like yeah. in every man's millionaire, I'm sorry. Like we should, you, you don't go and hang out at the, the bars or and have tiki drinks slung to you at the bar. Like, you, you don't do the things that Wisconsinites do. 
Yeah. And, and just to come in with an ad campaign to paint it that way is well, and he I, disingenuous. Some, something from his campaign showed up on my feed, and it was, I don't know, it was like the foundation of a successful life and work and ethics and faith and friends. And it, I, it's like, do you want to be in an elected office or do you want to offer your services as a life coach? Because I'm not getting a whole lot of policy or anything nope. like that. It's all platitudes. And the, if anything, he's trying to run away from things now. He's got the the, the whole co- comments in Rolling Stone on on drinking, the whole comments on on smoking marijuana. Uh, his uh, He's going to waffle on abortion. He cannot come out in Wisconsin as a everything is a, you no yeah, exceptions as a ban he can't do that and 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 once he does it if he, if he says well maybe we'll do some ex- exceptions the right's going to be upset and the left's going to be like you're a liar and so it he he's really just running himself in a circle i mean in that ad itself with with his wife she goes at 21 he started his own business don't he didn't take out a loan he didn't he didn't save up he took his father's money and he started his own business not in wisconsin dad, with his dad's money is this a convincer for anybody? I'm just curious. 855-75-CIVIC. He's going to donate his salary. Is that enough for you to vote for him? News is coming up next. Stay close. You're listening to Matt Nair on air. This is the Civic Media Radio Network. Air, Jane Matnair, Greg Bach, Luke Mathers on the board, associate producer Puppy Aurora at his feet. You can always join us at 855-75-CIVIC, 855-752-4842. Leave a comment on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and the platform that Elon has ruined. And if uh, you're lonely, they have they have their own party going on on the oh live stream. Gosh. I'm telling you, there's lots of friends there. You can go have a lot of fun, and they're saying really nice things. Oh. Tony is all Tony, just is fantastic. Uh, agree, one hundred percent. It's refreshing to hear intelligent, articulate conversations, Thanks, which Tony. I assume is directed at Jane. I was going to say um, I, I had no part in any of yeah. that, so that wasn't me. I'll take that. Thanks. Uh, and 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 uh, whether and why Tony said two nice things. Or Tony Zimmerman. There's two Tonys here. There's two Tonys. Weather and wine is a classy segment. No drunkenness there. I imagine it smells of leather bound books during that time and roaring fire. Oh yeah. And, and we're petting kittens and or doggies and or puppies. Yes. Weather and wine. We do every Wednesday with our civic media meteorologist Brittany Merlot. Exactly. She gives us a little update. Tony also said, "I thought Greg was 22." <laughs> you. Oh, you, you marry me. Come please. on. <laughs> All right. What is the reason why you won't shop at a store anymore? Personal, political. Well, yep. What 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 is, what is what is your reasoning? Is there a store you will not shop at and why? 855-75-CIVIC, 855-752-4842. Greg Bach. So I was scrolling across the tiktoks and or instagram reels i don't remember which but i saw a woman she had a lowe's private label credit card cut up in her hand and was like holding it towards the lowe's store that she went to she's showing it to lowe's yeah, I'm like, ah, i cut it up and ah, i'm not coming back you never get another another get a <laughs> hey penny from me and uh she said something to the effect of she's not going to go there anymore because lowe's has just lost her business so she went to take she bought a cooktop Okay, and she also she also mentions that she said I've bought enough kitchen appliances to fill two apartments and a home, which I that sounds like a problem. But she said I I missed the return policy for with, the cooktop. Yep, by four days. Okay, it's a thirty day return policy. She says I had COVID, so I couldn't get to you. So I'm no longer going to be going to Lowe's because you lost my business. I'm going to Home Depot instead. And my whole time reading this, going. You're upset that they wouldn't take it 34 days after 
you bought it. And then I asked you, what's the soonest you usually know when you're going to return something when you buy it? Two days. Yeah. Right? You, you you use it for two days. It's like, no, I don't like this. It's not doing what I expected it to do. If it's a cooktop, yeah. Yeah, that's something you use every day. And so there- it, it couldn't. You you wrangle over this for two weeks, deciding, do I like it? Do I not like it? Come yeah. on. I mean, I've bought stuff on Amazon where I set up the return as I'm getting it off of my porch because I realize <laughs> I don't need and or want it. And I guess to me, it's like you made such a spectacle of yourself saying, I'm standing up to you. This is this is no good to me. You You've mistreated me. You really just explained how you are absolutely in the wrong here. You waited. You had COVID. That's fine. I get it. Stay home, stay safe. But that's usually about five days now. Right. So you're going to tell me that in that first 25 days, yeah. you just were struggling over that cooktop. I really feel like you're, you, you, you're, you're kind of making yourself look like a fool. Well, and I kind of love those kinds of self owns. Yeah. Because we have to post everything now. Yeah. Every single thing well, or it didn't happen. I also don't think that Home Depot is going to take the return either. Just to let her know. Like, Home Depot's got her business, but uh, they're not going to take the yeah. return. Man, this doesn't come from our store. Well, I'm going to go to Ace. Good luck at Ace. <laughs> right, I, I, think, right. I think Walmart's the only one where Walmart, you kind of get uh, with those uh, very flustered employees where they're just like, all right, I'll accept Whatever. any return. Just, sure, just, fine. I don't even need a receipt. Just give it back. Here's store credit for it. There you go. Bye. Same with Target. I think Target, you don't even need a re- receipt. What? Like it's, no, I've, oh, every, I doubt that. I would say happens. every return I've ever done at Target, you need a receipt okay, for. Yeah. But Otherwise, you're going to have people just stealing things off the shelves and then walking back around and saying, I need I need, a, I need my cash back. Not that I'm suggesting. I was going to say, that answer, <laughs> that answer it, it came, came real the, quick. I know. Jane, like, Jane's it, like, wait, they don't require receipts? What could I take oh, no. and then try to get I have a natu- there on to me? I have a naturally criminal mind. <laughs> what can I say? It just, I thought, hey, that could work. Anyway, 855 <laughs> 75 Civic. What is the store you refuse to shop at and why? Scott from St. Louis is on the line. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, Um, By the way, to Target, I think you can return things without a receipt, but you get store credit, not money back. Oh, uh, okay. A receipt to get the money back. That makes sense. Um, I refuse to, and I will never touch Timu as much as people love it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it has low prices, but it's because they, one, sell your data, and two, use child labor mostly below the age of 12. What company is this, Scott? Timu. Timu, I have never heard Timu, of Timu. What, what is Timu? Remember it's Wish? A, yeah. It's essentially advertised as like a, I think they say like shop like a billionaire because everything is really cheap, but it's really cheap because they're using child labor. Oh, yeah. lovely. Yeah, it's it's terrible. That that sounds, I've yes, never that used sounds it. awful. Um, thank you so much, Scott. Really appreciate you listening. You, I always appreciate you calling. You didn't see the the Super Bowl ad that Timu ran? There was a Super Bowl ad that they spent millions of dollars oh, on. Yeah. That it was it was kind of like a it was a weird ad. It, 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 I hadn't heard about Timu until then. I started yeah. seeing it on on my phone on games as an advertiser. They started to slow roll out on like game advertising. Okay. And I just saw it. I'm like, this looks like Wish.com, and Wish is the exact same thing where you can buy and also. With Timu and Wish, you buy something based off the picture, and it comes to you. You're like, "This is not what I ordered. This is terrible." Yeah. Uh, there's a whole there's a whole side of TikTok and Instagram about things I ordered on Wish and what I actually got that look nothing like nothing the item. Like it. Uh, we got a text from Robert in McFarland. He said, "When I didn't have kids, I only shopped and ate local, but now it's hard to stay out of the big box stores. I refuse to shop at because it's too." Af- Oh, it's oh, I see. It's too it's too uh, affordable, so therefore he can't not shop at big box stores because oh, he has kids. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I I hear that. And Absolutely. I get, and I get that. Absolutely. I used, I used to carry a anti Walmart flag on my shoulder and be like you don't understand the name and Target's better. And then a friend of mine brought me into his office. He showed me a website. He goes, "This is a website. This is a website that will show you every company that's being sued, like a major company, and why." And because people always try to say Walmart isn't as good as Target, and you're like, oh, they're all trash. All these companies are terrible. <laughs> they're all run by horrible people. I'll shop anywhere I want. <laughs> but I get that. Well, I mean, and and I do think, 
the ability to not shop somewhere comes from a place of privilege. It does. Yeah, because a lot of places, uh, <laughs> grocery stores, like if, grocery stores, convenience stores, anything that you need to go to in a lot of communities, there's only a few options. You don't mm-hmm. have the opportunity exactly. to choose around. Like there, yeah. there is either right. a Target or a, a Walmart, Walmart or a Dollar General or like you have to you have shop to go there. at those yep. places. There's no other alternative. But I, I did see something, uh, speaking of the, so this Timu that, that Scott just mentioned, um, Amazon Marketplace. Yeah. So all those, remember the smash and grabs that were going on in California? I just saw, yep, yep, yep. All those smash and grabs, and we would see it on the news, yep. and these gangs coming in and just smashing windows out and running, you know, filling up bags and then running back out. A California couple, white couple, yeah, in their early 50s, arrested for setting up this smash and grab ring. Yep, yeah. And she just... essentially recruited women to steal stuff from Sephora mm-hmm. and other high end makeup places, and then she would she would sell it in on the Amazon marketplace yeah, and they, for like half the half the price. And they were well off too. This is this they lived a, in a mansion. Yeah, uh, I just saw that before the show started. I was like, oh my gosh, because you know what happened when you saw those videos of people just stealing products. I mean, putting them in garbage cans yep. and just walking out. Yep. You're like, oh my god, I can't believe kids. Well. Someone hired them. The kids them. were working for someone. They were working. Yeah, they, they yeah, they were. Yeah. So it, I guess it's just to be a little cautionary about where you're going to buy stuff from. Yeah. And, 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 you and point your finger at. Well, yeah, that too. Carmela from Milwaukee is on the line. Good morning, Carmela. Thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> Good morning. I was just going to say, I used to have a specific person. Sorry, I'm sitting next to someone's car alarm going off. Um, anyway. Um, usually what it is, is customer service and it used to drive me nuts at, uh, like Walmart, but then I started reconsidering because usually it's temporary. The employee's usually not there that long. They will go back and give them a second chance. Oh, good for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. That's great. Carmela. That's very, very <laughs> kind. That's very kind. Thank you so much for listening. Carmela. really, really appreciate it. I agree though. Bad customer service. Yeah. That happens enough times. I'm not going oh, back absolutely. there. Oh, absolutely. I think that's a better excuse than I missed the return window, too. Oh, like, yeah. If you have an employee or, or somebody there at the store that's rude to you or you have a negative interaction with, I think that's better than I was four days late myself if, returning this. Even if I have a bad experience with a customer customer service, it has to be really bad. It has to feel intentional or like, oh, I feel like this person just doesn't care. There are times you have bad oh, customer yeah. you, service and you, you can, can tell catch somebody on a bad day yeah, yeah exactly oh yes absolutely um we got a, a live stream comment uh jeff uh, sitzma i hope i'm pronouncing that correct jeff jeff sitzma never at hobby lobby do crazy crazy religious owners um I, i've heard i know a lot of people who are like that i know a lot of people who do not shop at hobby lobby chick-fil-a so on and so forth um uh, you know and and i get that i totally understand that but once again, I'm just going to say this. If you dig deep enough into the companies you do like, you might not like what you find. They're all bad. They can be bad, religious, so on, but whatever. Just do your due diligence. And, you know, I, but I understand. And then uh, uh, Tony said, not so much a store, but a service, AT&T. They were shifty in the 70s, the 90s, and yes, today. I, I don't know about that personally myself. Um, we, yeah. Is that the third Tony in the live stream too? Man, it is a Tony a party. Tony, 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 Tony party heavy. on social media today. Yeah. <laughs> 855-75-CIVIC, 855-752-4842. If you would like to join the discussion uh, again, there are, you're, you're, you make such a good point, Luke, about having choices is really dependent upon where you are. And, and for Folks in smaller communities and and you know outlying communities, you don't you don't have a choice and you don't get to be moralistic about where you're gonna buy your milk. Yeah, because because you gotta buy milk. Yep. Yeah. Uh, got a uh, a text from Cindy in Wausau, uh, mirroring what Tony said. No to Hobby Lobby. They don't like it because of their reproductive rights stance. Nobody should get to decide anybody's. Um, that's where it left off. Uh, oh, personal health decisions. They also have stolen artifacts and have been in trouble for that. Yes. They have ripped off fiber artists when it comes to hand-dyed yarns. My goodness. And then uh, Scott from Madison said, I had a manager at Men's Warehouse not let me try on clothing because 
then it would be used and they don't sell used clothes. What? what? So wait, wait a minute. Read that again, Scott. Let me clarify. Is it, are you saying that if you got took it said, okay, I had a manager at men's warehouse, not let me try on clothing because then it would be used and they don't sell used clothing. <laughs> that is one of the most, that's better than the alternative. I remember, uh, the local news did like a, a deep dive story on Walmart or target. I forget. It was one of the bigger box stores and taking, uh, underwear that was returned and then trying to resell it. And so they had like this deep dive. Invest I have to remember, like, I'm barely recalling this. So I, I'm going to have to look into it to get more of the details. But essentially, they would buy the underwear as a customer, mark the inside of the underwear with either like a oh, uh, marker terrifying. or like an invisible ink kind of thing. Yep. And then they'd return it. And then they'd go back to shop to see if it returned to the oh. shelves. And so they're like, there's a whole thing there. And then there's the, that. I, I'd rather have them air on the side of, oh, you can't try it on. You got to buy it. It's a suit. But it's, but it's a, yeah, su but a suit. It's you have a to, suit. I've gone to men's warehouse <sighs> and they've let me try, not, try to fit. Me. I was just say, I feel like I, I've, I don't know if I've ever tried to put pants on. I guess I've been tailored though for a suit before. Yeah. And are those just the rental pants and they only let you use those? <laughs> I don't know. Weird. I, I, I'm curious that if they don't let you try on the anything other than the rentals at men's warehouse. You try it. You buy it. You yeah. buy it. All right. <laughs> Stay with us. You're listening to Matt Nair on air. This is the Civic Media Radio Network. Greg Bach, Luke Mathers on the board, coming to you live from our studio in downtown Waukesha. You can always join the show. Call or text 855-75-CIVIC or leave a comment on a live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and or Twitter. Greg Bach, you said we have a text. We had a, we had a good text come through. Hello, uh, it's Tammy listening in Virginia on WMDX. So I guess is on the app. I would so assume wonderful. so. Cool. Get that civic media app in your pocket. She said, I use good goods. Unite us helps me make good choices of where I spend my money. So to check that out, oh, that's I great. Like that. I love that kind it's, of stuff. It's a Wisconsin based uh, service as well. Is I it believe, seriously? I believe based out of Middleton, if I remember correctly, goods unite us. Yeah. Nice. Uh, essentially it gives you a background of either the ownership management, people that work there, uh, or own the company, how they typically support when they de give political donations, Where who they typically support. Interesting. And so it gives you a nice background of the makeup of the ownership and the management and the employees of a of a corporation to, to kind of see what what uh, how they engage in the world of politics. Goods unite us. Goods unite us. Looking at it right now, it's really cool. We're going to have to make a reach to them. I would like to talk I to think those that's people. What, that's a especially great idea. if it's a Wisconsin based company. Tammy from there's, Virginia, thank you for There's that. always a Wisconsin connection, guys. Every every single thing, always a Wisconsin oh, really? connection. All good oh, things come back to Wisconsin. Chairs. All 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 good things lead to Wisconsin. Exactly. In, in one form or another. Uh, we're going to close things out, and I do want to talk about basketball because... Well, three degrees of cheese real quick. That's all I'm going to say. Three degrees of cheese. Three degrees of cheese. Or beyond the cheese. Yeah. Those are two separate things. <laughs> two different segments. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Um, we are going to talk about that there's a big game this afternoon, um, and if we, we are airing it on several of our civic media radio stations, so we'll get to that in just a second. But Greg and I kind of stumbled across this earlier this morning. Um, if you are looking for a nice little getaway, impress your friends, hide from your friends, uh, there is a, uh, a prepper house for sale outside of Superior. Mm -hmm. It's only... It's only one point one million dollars, which is it's kind of a deal. It's a deal. It is. It's on eighty acres, eighty private acres near Superior. 
listed for $1.1 million. It was built not by today's current doomsday preppers. It was built by the Y2K preppers. Yeah. <laughs> And I don't know if those are even the best. But I I like the the duck and cover preppers of uh, the Cold War era. I, I gotta go before. That? I gotta go before Y2K. For your favorite, yeah, yeah, your yeah. favorite prepper. The really <laughs> thorough prepping that went into that. I, oh yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. If I had the money, I would buy this house immediately. It's absolutely beautiful. You think I, it's that cool? Oh God, I want it so bad. I want to live in the woods, and I want I want to have grass on my roof. Well, this place does have, it has grass on the roof, so it's kind of, it is an inter- interesting construction because it is built into a hill. So from above. So it's like it, the Shire. Yeah, sort of. Okay. Sort of like the Shire. All right. With I mean, 18 but, but, years of canned food. Does it, what? <laughs> is that included in the sale? <laughs> there is a there is a canning room. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. And there's like three separate full apartments. Yeah. There's, there's three separate, three bedroom Oh, so you don't even have we, the three of us could and our families could go in on it together. Yeah, we don't. You don't even need to be the single homeowner. Right, that's you can, true. You can. That's a steal then, because yeah. one point one million divided by three, much more affordable not than so you know. Bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not so bad. <laughs> there's a sauna. <laughs> there's a, there, there are some really big common areas. There's a there's a trench. Is there a mandatory tinfoil hat that you have to wear when you're in the residence? We, or... could, we could start that okay. rule. Yeah. Okay. We can yeah. we can institute right. the tinfoil hat rule. Do the I... goats like at Al Johnson's come <laughs> on the roof or do you have to provide your own? I goats? feel like okay, it's I see... BYOG, pretty pretty sure. <laughs> All right, folks, I'm I'm picking up their sarcasm. I'm serious, I want this house. <laughs> and for me, and I I one of the best things about buying a house is the real estate experience. You walk into an open house and there's always someone there with a big whitened tooth smile and the, the place smells like cookies and they want to shake your hand and be just magnanimous and say things like, this truly unique underground home is built to stand the test of time with stone and mortar exterior. A living room on top of, wait, like a living a living roof on top is a newer rubber roof laid over Span Creek and pre-stressed hollow core ceiling slabs for the ultimate in strength and durability. Well, sign me up. Right see, now. It sounds more like Greg wants to try to sell this house than Greg wants to buy this house. The Greg. walls and interior are structured <laughs> are a mixture of poor concrete and low high load areas and concrete blocks and other areas to create storage rooms and interior walls. It also has a shooting range, plenty of lumber, apple trees, and five acres of cleared gardening space for those apocalypse uh, apocalypse ready gardeners, you want to be able to you know can lots. Of, there's a canning room. You got to yeah, grow stuff, gotta, and then yeah. you can can it exactly. And so, if you are looking for somewhere to avoid the zombie apocalypse, it's just outside of Superior. Oh, that gives yeah. me a really good insight. You think it's a zombie apocalypse that's coming? It's just liberals, <laughs> liberal <laughs> well, women, liber- caravans of liberal women. What could be more scary? Really, it's what? always it is always a very nice insight to somebody's you know psyche. Yeah, yes. to what, see what, what kind of the most. what kind of apocalypse they think is yep, coming. Yep, yep, yep. Caravans of liberal women, Luke. That's what that's what gets some people screaming in terror. All right, basketball. They was big. That was a big win last uh, yesterday. Yeah, they did. The, well, and but they beat them by thirty points. Maryland took care of Rutgers, I believe, two days ago, and in a very big blowout fashion, very similar to what Wisconsin did to Maryland yesterday. So I was a little worried going into yesterday's game because Maryland took care of business yep. on their their first game, yep. but they had an injury, I think, to, kind of late in the in their game again, their first round game. Uh, so Bucky taking care of business, taking on Northwestern. Uh, I'm I'm hoping that they keep going. Are you I, feeling I, good about it? I, yeah. it? It's been kind of hard the, the last. Uh, Last couple of weeks of Big Ten play has not been kind to the Badgers, so it'll be interesting to see how far they can go here in the Big Ten tournament. It was a pretty. I mean, it was just nice to see them win so handily, yeah, and and really put it oh, away. Yeah. So that that was pretty sweet. And uh, again, we are airing the game on a number of Civic Media radio stations. You can go to our website, civicmedia.us, if you want to listen to the Badgers take on Northwestern. That game starts around one thirty today. Yeah, broadcast coverage begins at twelve thirty, and then the game tip off right around one thirty. Right around one thirty. All right, Luke Mathers, you're gonna be back here on Monday. I will be back on Monday. I've got one more day of being Calvin. Uh, it's being really Calvin. fun. It's fun. I didn't grow up my hair well enough. For you got, the experience. Well, you got a couple days. <laughs> Is that the sequel, Being Calvin Butenhoff? Like, <laughs> yes. The sequel to what? 
being John Malcolm. Come on, see a movie, all right? Jeez. Thank you to Dan Schaefer for joining us. Thank you, Greg Bach. Thank you, Luke Mathers. Without you guys, nothing works. <laughs> and thank you most of all to all of you for calling and for texting and for listening. It means more than you know. I hope you find some joy today and you have the chance to share it. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. News is next on the Civic Media Radio Network.